So let's look at extension methods, which are kind of a nice little go-between between, between regular instance methods and actually adding some functionality to a type. You know, generally, you're probably used to inheriting from a type and adding some methods and doing some things, and, and that's good and dandy, but sometimes you just don't want to do all the headache of inheriting from the type, or maybe you're doing something that uh, doesn't make sense to just make a make a drive class or, or whatever. It could be whatever. Let's, let me show you. I'm going to go through an example I did in my book with Bruce Eckel on mindview.net. If you go, let me pull it up here. This is this has been up for a while, but if you go to this mindviewinc.com, index.php. Anyway, if you go here, C-sharp query expressions, you can download the, a book I worked on here with, with Bruce Eckel. Anyway, I'm going to take you through an example there. And date time, if we look at the date time type, date time, I'm going to hit F12 on it. If you notice, it's a struct. All right, and structs are implicitly sealed. Okay, and if if that doesn't have any meaning to you, go look at the uh, structor value type videos, and uh, also the sealed videos. But but anyway, this this date time I can't inherit from and I can't add to it. But you know, sometimes I'll have two date times. I'll have one with a a, a date part and one with a time part, and I want to combine them together and merge them. All right, so let me let me show you here. For example, date time. Date gets, uh, let's do date time dot parse. Uh, let's give a string one, five, and let's let's go into the future, 2025. Okay, so there's a date part. And then um, let's do date time. Uh, time gets, uh, gets date time dot parse. And let's just, I don't know, one, one, uh, uh oh. Oh, I don't even know if that's a valid day, uh, date with date time. We'll find out when I run it. Uh, and then uh, time, let's do 9.55 p.m. And I'm hoping that these two will work. Let's, in fact, let me just, <laughs> I'm not sure if this is going to parse. It's been a while since I've tried to type up a string. Oh, of course it's not, yeah, I just, oh. <laughs> That's the worst when it happens, like when you're demoing to some clients or to your boss or whatever, and boom, blows up, you know. Anyway, let's let's do a little debugging here. Uh, let's figure out which one that doesn't like. It likes the first one, doesn't like the second one. I think I think I have to have uh, one there, do I? Yeah, okay, that worked fine. All right, press and you continue. Okay, so here's the valid date and the time portion. Let me um, actually print this one out. I'm gonna say date there. Yeah, so you see the time's kind of it's midnight. It's 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 kind of useless. Uh, and here's the date, and then I got the time here. Say I want to combine these two values. Say I pulled this date from somewhere, and I pulled this time from somewhere. I want to combine the two. Well, well, one way to do that is um, let's do date time combined gets. Uh, can I say new date time? I think I can. New date time. Yeah, lots of overloads here. So let's get rid of this line here. Uh, let's do the year. The year is going to be date dot year. The month's going to be date dot month. The day is going to be date dot day. A day. Okay, and then let's see. We see we have an overload here for hour, minute, second. Well, the hour is going to come from time dot hour, time dot minute, and time dot second. Well, ideally, hopefully, if you're doing this a lot, you're not going to paste this code everywhere. All right. Uh, hopefully. Hopefully it makes sense at this point that, yeah, this could get kind of ugly. We should probably put it in a method. But before I do that, let me just show you the results of combined here. Combined. Run it. Ooh, there we go. Okay, so January 1st, 2025. January 1st, 2025. And then the uh, time portion, 9.55 p.m. Very good. All right. Well, let's let's put that in a helper method. So static. Um, date, time. And we can call it merge. You can call it combine. It could be either one. But let's do date, time. Uh, date part, date time, time part, and then here I'm going to just grab this, I'm going to drag it up here, and put it down, I'm going to say, hey, return that, All right? but instead I need the uh, date part, date part, date part, this is always the fun part of refactoring, is uh, is your variable names and things like that. But okay, so we got the date part, we got the time part. All right, so now I can just say um, combine 
uh, date and time, and then let's print out combined here, and we get the same result. That's nice. Okay, a little bit of refactoring. Now it may, may it may make sense to you syntactically, and and it's pre pretty much syntactically combine uh, to pass the date part and time part in. But you know maybe you're a little bit more like me, and I'm gonna call this combine two. And I want to say, hey date, why don't you combine combine with the time? Okay, syntactically it doesn't really matter the difference between this and this. It's just personally is. I kind of like reading this. I, I, it makes sense to me. Date combined with time. All right. Well, obviously I'm getting a squiggly here because date is of type date time, and date time does not have a combined method. All right. If I hover over here, system dot date time. Oh, system dot date time does not contain a definition for combine or extension method. Uh, combine yada yada. So let's make an extension method. All right. Well, extension methods are pretty straightforward. They have to be static. And then I'm going to say this here. And extension methods also have to be inside a static class. So generally, when you make a lot of these or a few of them, we just make a class to hold these extension methods. Okay? And it just so happens that this is a small example, so I'm doing it all in, in this one class that has two static methods. But essentially, now it's static. Notice the red squiggly went away. So the compiler, it's, it's smart enough with extension methods rules. It says, okay, well, date doesn't have a combine. But the rule is, is there an extension method that takes the first argument of type, type date time? The second argument has to be date time. And is it called combine? And is, an ex is it an extension method? Well, it just so happens that yes, here. Here is one. It's an extension method because I said this out here. So if you notice, I'm going to step through this with uh, F11. F11, F11, F11. So I can call this extension method like a normal static method. In fact, that's all it is. It's just a static method. All right, with a little cue here to the compiler that it could be used as an extension method. So if I F11 into there, yeah, this the same one gets used. Okay, but now when I say date dot combine, I'm going to F11 on this, and notice the call, this call down here, resolved to our extension method up here. This this combine. Okay, and and it returns a, a result as well. So just to prove it works, let's actually um, let's print out the values of combined one and combined two and of course there's error combined yeah because I spelled it wrong I didn't have a one out here so let's put a one run it and you see the results are identical for both of them so anyway that's an extension method in a nutshell in the next video I'm going to talk a little bit about the reasoning why we have we put this here and that